on the President's behalf to tell the men and women of the Marshall Space Flight Center and the American people that at the direction of the President of the United States, it is the stated policy of this administration and the United States of America to return American astronauts to the moon within the next five years. Well, that was Vice President Mike Pence yesterday pushing for an ambitious new lunar mission. 56 years after JFK's famous We Chose to Go to the Moon speech. Well, the United States became the first country to land on the moon's surface in the summer of 1969. In total, the U.S. carried out six manned missions to the moon. And the last American stepping foot on the surface was back in 1972. CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood joins me now from Houston. So, Bill, does the Trump administration have a real concrete plan to do this in five years? Well, they certainly got a concrete plan to shoot one over the bow of NASA, if you will. This came as a shock to a lot of people uh, to say to put a five-year deadline on something as ambitious as going back to the surface of the moon when NASA was thinking about doing it 2028, somewhere toward the end of the decade, uh, that's a pretty serious uh, a challenge indeed. Now, clearly, these are smart people involved. They're obviously very serious about this, and uh, they've left no room uh, for doubt that NASA needs to get this moving. I think the administration is unhappy with the progress to date, with the rockets they're going to need to get there, uh, with the spacecraft, and they want to get it moving, speed things up, and put people on the moon. And I'll point out, uh, that in 2024 would be the last year of the Trump administration if he's reelected. And of course, this has uh, been a goal of theirs is to return to the moon uh, with boots on the surface. And so I think it's an ambitious challenge. I, I, I'm not sure they can do it, but they've clearly told them they're going to have to try. So you say this is ambitious. What would you say are the obstacles that prevent them from meeting this deadline? Well, there's a couple of big issues. Uh, the big super rocket they need is called the Space Launch System or SLS. And that's being managed by the engineers at the Marshall Space Flight Center, where Vice President Pence was talking. Uh, that rocket is over budget and way behind schedule. Uh, they absolutely have to get that moving faster to have any chance of getting there in the next five years. Uh, the Orion spacecraft, the capsule is going to carry the astronauts back to the vicinity of the moon. That's got to be kept on schedule. And remember, there are no lunar landers even on the drawing board right now. So NASA is going to have to find commercial vendors, contractors, others who will uh, bid on this, come up with some designs uh, that they can then quickly build, get to the moon, and down to the lunar surface, all within five years. So it's just, you know, it's not that they can't do it. They certainly can. Mm -hmm. The question is, can they pull it all together that fast? That's anybody's guess at this point. And Bill, what would you say, what role should private companies, you've got SpaceX out there, what should pr these private companies play? What role should they play and what opportunity could be there for them? Well, they're already playing a major role in this. Remember, NASA doesn't build the rockets themselves. It comes down to how they're managed. So the big super rocket I was talking about, the Space Launch System, that's being managed by Boeing. Uh, and they're having major problems getting that rocket to the delivery date. Uh, Lockheed Martin is building the Orion capsule. SpaceX and Boeing, too, they're both building commercial cruise ships that are going to carry astronauts to and from the space station. As you know, we covered a SpaceX test flight just recently. Uh, so they've kind of got their hands full. But NASA clearly wants private industry more heavily involved. They would like to see missions to the moon that are purely private. They'd like to see companies going to the moon with science payloads to learn more about, you know, maybe extracting ores from the moon, energy generation, the list goes on and on. Uh, I think there's golden opportunities for the private sector to get involved with this. But again, you know, NASA's got to spearhead this effort to build the hardware uh, to get these big pieces of infrastructure to the moon, you know, landers, they want to build a small space station around the moon called Gateway. Mm -hmm. All of that's got to happen roughly at the same time. So it's it's a real, real balancing act to see how all this is going to play out. And the last time Americans went to the moon was back in 1972. Why do you think the administration feels that it's time to go back now? Well, you know, the, the, it's really kind of had an up and down road. You know, the Bush administration uh, back in the early 2000s set the moon as the goal. And they were building toward that, NASA was. And then the Obama administration canceled that, thinking it was going to cost too much money. Uh, the Trump administration has come in and said, no, the moon's the most logical step to build the, the, the hardware, do the, the testing you need to eventually fly people to Mars. I mean, that is the long-range goal. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a logical step in space exploration. It makes a lot of sense. 
But putting that five-year time limit on it, you know, you mentioned President Kennedy. It was a let's get there before the end of the decade, and they spent an enormous amount of money doing it, uh, more than $100 billion in today's money. And NASA's budget isn't anything like that today. And so even though they've got the basic knowledge to go back to the moon, doing it in five years, that is, a, that is, going, to be, that is going to be tough. Bill Harwood, thank you for joining us, Bill.